Welcome back to Total Party Kill. Today, today we are starting off a new mini adventure. That's right. Today we will be playing the Queen of Redwater from the Fantastic Adventures series of adventures available from Sly Flourish. It's me, Tony Sindelar, a dungeon master, joined by assistant to the regional dungeon master, Dan Morin. Say hi, Dan. Hi, Tony. Very good. Moving on, uh, we are happy today to have a new collection, some new players, some new characters, and Monty is also here. Uh, <laughs> allow me to introduce our players. They will introduce their characters, and then we will return to the land of White Sparrow and jump into it. Uh, first off, uh, new to uh, Total Party Kill, uh, you may know her from her work on the Relay FM network. It's Rosemary Orchard. Hi, Rosemary. Hello, Tanny. Rosemary, tell us who your character is and what they do. Uh, my character is uh, Gim Eka, uh, which is uh, difficult to pronounce, so good luck with that. Uh, she is a high elf bard, and we're going to have a lot of fun in the uh, purple clothing that I'm wearing and uh, pointy instruments. Excellent. Uh, also new to Total Party Kill, uh, you may know her from the Lions, uh, Tigers and Shields. Is that the right? Towers. I think I said one of those. I, although I mistype towers. it as Tigers all the time. It's Lions. I was towers like, wait a minute. Shield. That's yeah. That was like I don't think there's any tigers in there. I was trying to think of what movie. Company if only had a there were tiger tigers. logo. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Lions, Towers, and Shields on the Incomparable Network. It is Shelly Brisbane, new to Total Party Kill. Hi, Shelly. Hello, hello. I am Kaleth Lyadin. I can even pronounce my own name. I am a high elf sorcerer. That's right. Two high elves, the fanciest of elves <laughs> so far. Um, next up, uh, new to Total Party Kill, uh, but you may have seen him or heard his voice on several Incomparable Network uh, podcasts he gets around, uh, but not at all new to Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, we're very excited to have with us Cicero Holmes. Hi, Cicero. Oh, hey, it's me. Hey, Tony, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Are you, did you, do you have a character I, for oh, us today? Um, oh, crap. Uh, I knew there was something <laughs> I was supposed to do. Uh, so I am playing Enavin, uh, or Enavon. It depends on how you want to pronounce him uh, mm -hmm. or them. They are a Azimar cleric. Okay. And I know uh, from Monty Ashley's character in Shocktober that Azimars are beautiful and uh, otherworldly creatures. That is the extent of what I know about them. Um, <laughs> Monty, I don't know. Monty's last uh, was kind of haughty, but maybe that was haughty. I hey, know. haughty. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 that is not the words I used. Uh, I don't know if that is a, a, a trait of all of them or just, just how Monty is. Uh, speaking of Monty, let's introduce Monty Ashley. Uh, he is on a lot of Total Party Kill. And guess what? He's on this one, too. Hi, Monty. Hi. It's me, Monty. I'm playing, again, Krong, the bugbear rogue. He's kind of a nightmare under the bed monster. When, mm. And lately I'm kind of thinking of him as Gossamer, the orange monster that leads such interesting lives from a couple Bugs Bunny cartoons with witch hazel in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monty, I believe this is your fourth mini adventure, which is, so it's like your senior year for Krong, um, you know, so give it all you got. It's my understanding <laughs> that Krong will be retired or murdered or something <laughs> something uh we can all agree something the, will happen the trades have gotten word out that krong has not renewed his contract with the series so yeah. everybody's tuning in to see you mm -hmm. know how are they going to write him out of the show yeah to be determined Sadly, he falls and, down an elevator shaft <laughs> <laughs> and last uh but not least a uh a, a, a frequent appearer on total party kill but with a new character it's elaine sims I have never played a mountain dwarf before, and I've never played a fighter before, so we will see how Bella and Greybeard and I get along. Okay, excellent. Uh, so uh, today we are going to be continuing uh, adventures that take place in the in and around the town of White Sparrow, a town most noted for its giant stone hand that sticks up out of the ground and they built a town around it. Why? No one really knows. 
why why do people stay here for the hand uh but you know this is this is a bit of a crossroads in the in the kind of rural area where it's located and it's it's a place to stop over uh for adventurers uh it's a place where you can get a beverage and some food and some shelter um and meet up with other adventurers the uh, ever shady tavern is well it's the only tavern in town first off uh but it's built right right in the shadow of the hand and it is not unusual for there to be uh, a, a, a gathering of adventures, whether it's a group that has traveled together for some time or a group that is just meeting up uh, to share stories around a beverage. And so that is where our adventure starts today. Uh, Krong, you are there. Uh, I don't think any of your previous companions are, uh, are are present in the Evershady Tavern. So have you made some new friends? Are you drinking alone? What's, what's going on? Uh, lurking in the corner of the pub as usual, kind of. Uh. At this point, I feel like I'm a regular, but I still sneak in and cr- push myself as far into the darkest corner as possible. I just feel yeah. comfortable that way. Yep. The, there's like a there's like a one of those nice little corner booths, and in that corner booth, there's an alcove, and in that alcove, there's a niche, and in that niche is Krong, <laughs> the uh, the spooky bug bugbear that is also a lovable regular at the Ever Shady Tavern. That's right. Uh, all the various farmers and tradespeople, you know. Give him a, a nod, which he uh, uh, may or may not acknowledge. <laughs> um, Greetings, Farmer so, Jones. Yeah, I'm glad uh, your crop is coming in nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nightmare Monster. Um, See as you is night. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, there are an assortment of other folks uh, here in the Ever Shady Tavern. Some of them looking like just the townsfolk of White Sparrow. Some of them looking uh, like adventurers stopping here along the ra- way. Uh, there is uh, the door uh, bangs open uh, somewhat dramatically. It's standing in the uh, the doorway is the uh, the somewhat familiar uh, face of one Sheriff Ruth Willowmane, the closest there is to uh, law and order in White Sparrow. She keeps things in order. She is a uh, a seasoned kind of retired soldier. She's uh she's got a lot of leather. She's got a lot of tattoos. She has a hat that you know, frankly, a lot of people would kill for, and maybe she did. And to play that NPC. Please welcome to the podcast, Dan Morin. Hello. <laughs> there are adventurers in here somewhere? Like, some of you must be adventurers. Looking around the tavern, Sheriff Ruth Willowmane, you spot the familiar uh, sign, uh, sign shape of Krong lurking in the shadows. You've, uh, you've, you've, you, you're at least familiar with Krong's reputation. There's some, uh, some perhaps new faces in the tavern, which maybe you'll meet ser- soon. But perhaps I, I think Krong would catch your attention first off uh, as a known quantity. Night nightmare monster, uh, Krong, right? Krong. Yes. That's me, the horrible nightmare monster. How can I help you? Today? Great. Uh, I I could really use your help. There's there's some some problems going on in town, and I, I don't know. You might need some some backup for this, but uh, it's kind of a weird situation. Maybe we can find a couple more people. I'll explain it. I'll lay it all out for you, and you really be doing me a solid. Okay. Um, um, is are anybody looking? Are there any new adventurer types lurking around this bar? Uh, you notice some. Uh, you know they they kind of stand out uh, in that they are not human, and white and uh, white sparrow is overwhelmingly human. Uh, uh, there is uh, you see a, you see a dwarf, you see some 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 elves, uh, and uh, yeah. So there's several non-human people that, in addition to not being human, also have that kind of. Uh, rough and tumble look of living on the road, uh, having weapons, uh, maybe having fancy armor, that kind of thing. They don't look like they just came in from a day of field work, is what I'm saying. Uh, I will go loom over the uh, bard. All right. Uh, Rosemary, uh, make sure I'm getting the name right. Is it uh, Jamika? How do do we say Jamika? Jamika? Uh, I was splitting it, Gem Eka, but... Gem Eka. Gem Eka. Uh, you are probably just enjoying a snack or a beverage, and there is suddenly a large, furry. Uh, Monty, are you eight feet tall? Um, I probably said that at some point, but it's oh, all right. Seven and a half. Can- <laughs> can- <laughs> Cannon, eight foot tall, furry monster looms over you, casting a shadow across you in the table. And oh. I should also add, because of these boots I got, I make no noise when I walk, so I do just appear <laughs> a lot. Mm. 
And he's always uh, in a way to cast a shadow. <laughs> so. Greetings, adventurer. Hello. <laughs> you are here to prove your worth. Well, you seem kind of scary. Sure. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> How would you like to help this town with whatever its latest problem is? Hmm. <laughs> Will I get they the snack really for free? A... <laughs> no. I've saved this town three times, and all I get is a 10% discount. On <laughs> I'll take 10%. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have let Krong do the talking on this one. Hi, I'm Sheriff Ruth Willamain. <laughs> I'm uh, collecting you look, a backup squad, like you said. Uh, no, I appreciate Krong. Good good effort, good initiative. Uh, I think that's great. Uh, the rest, uh, there's a few other people around here that they look like they're carrying weapons. That seems like a good start. Uh, uh, the lady over there with that morning star, maybe, and uh, uh, that really handsome fellow with the scythe. I, maybe we should talk to him. <laughs> This is still for whatever your problem is, right? You're not just... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, obviously, of course, of course, yes. Oh, He's hey. a good morning star. <laughs> here, why don't, uh, why don't you grab a couple of those, bring them over to this table, and I'll, I'll lay it all out, and we'll see what we can do here. Okay. Not physically, not physically, Krong. You don't have to... Go. Oh, you know I'm not an idiot, right? I know when you look at me, all you see is a night... You get it. <laughs> all right, um... Going around the bar. Dwarf. Hello, dwarf. What is your name, dwarf? Bellin nods and says, Bellin. Hello, Bellin. <laughs> My name is Krong. You are needed on an urgent mission. That is why you have come to this town, right? Either that or looking at that weird hand. <laughs> have you noticed it only has six fingers? <laughs> How many fingers do you have? I mean, I don't really have... I more have claws and uh, talons. Uh, yeah. But, but most of the humans... I, do you want to go look at that hand? <laughs> I mean, that that is why I'm here, for sure. <laughs> Me too, absolutely. But apparently, in order to be allowed to look at the hand, we have to do nice things for the town. Oh. Okay, well, I'm also here Krong, for Krong, stay on mission. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like... You have not told me what the mission is or given me any details. I am forced to say the most vague nonsense to these people. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Would you will, like to help this town on a matter of some undefined urgency? I will at least hear the mission, as you say, out. <laughs> Good idea. I, I would like to do that. Okay. All right, who's left? Do I have to do this for every single person? I think I yeah. think the sheriff the sheriff will the sheriff. Uh, will recruit. Uh, <laughs> Would you like uh, to help? Yes, the sheriff will will uh, go over to the sorcerer who is standing there, the high elf sorcerer, and say, uh, "Hi, you you seem to be new here, but you have the look of an adventurer about you. Uh, perhaps I can enlist you to help the town in an urgent matter." Hello, I'm I'm bouncing on the balls of my feet over here. I notice that there's activity and people are joining little groups, and I'm just waiting to be asked to you, to join you, in. I'm excited. You seem like a real go getter. Let's. I'm, uh... I, you know what? I just love adventure. I've never actually done any adventuring before, but I love adventure. Yeah, so so what's going on? I'm I'm fast. all in. Let's let's go. All right, go. Come, here, come Am on I over to this to table. I mention quickly in Elvish that there's a ten percent discount on soup if you do the adventure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, the Elf Whisper Network is Thanks. already in work. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hi, I, I, so you, I see you're a fellow high elf. It's nice to meet you. Hello. Uh, and then uh, one of us, uh, I can go over and talk to Enavon as well. Cicero, uh, would you uh, describe what do uh, these people who, you know, these are real White Sparrow, real real salt of the earth, not exactly traveled, uh, you know, not used to people that are not human, maybe, you know, they've seen some elves and dwarves. I, I, I suspect they probably have not crossed paths with a creature quite like Enavon before. Would you would you like to describe what Enavon looks like so, sitting there in the ever shady tavern? So Enavon is, he's, he's ethereal he's almost like sea green and Ooh. and uh that's his skin tone um his eyes are darting every which way and he seems both like very very interested and uninterested at all with everything that is going on it doesn't seem like he is really paying attention 
to what you guys are talking about, but every now and then he will make eye contact with with different people amongst the group. And at this moment, he makes eye contact with the sheriff. Oh, hello there. I, I don't believe we've been introduced. I'm Sheriff Ruth Willamain. I have you, I'm have law you and order seen in any town. cats? Have you seen any, any cats? Cats? Yeah, I, there, there are cats in town, sure. Uh, occasionally behind the tavern, they Do come you, for snacks. Are you aware of the healing properties of cats? I, I cannot say that I am. I just knew them as creatures that like milk. The healing properties of cats are beyond your comprehension, I, I appear. That, that seems clear. So, I need cats. Uh, more specifically, I need cat tongues. Or, well, more specific than that, I need cat saliva. Okay, okay. Because well, I, I can uh, use that to heal. That that sounds amazing. Don't get me wrong. That's fascinating. I've never quite heard of anything like that before. But perhaps if you could assist me with a particular task, we could ensure that you get access to uh, all the cat saliva you need. Well, you may call it cat spit, but oh, well, that's, well, that is what the plebeians call it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Well, uh, why don't you come over here with me, Sher- Sheriff Ruth Willamine? As you look around the Ever Shady Tavern nervously, uh, it is clear there are no other adventures. There are no the other universe. options. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, you seem a likely enough group, and let me lay out this problem that the town is having. You might have noticed if you've uh, traveled uh, farther afield. We're in a bit of a drought right now in the town. There's. Not a lot of water to go around this. Obviously, we're a farming community, and uh, our crops are our lifeblood. So uh, not having access to water, it's a real problem. We thought maybe it was just a, a matter of the weather, but, you know, we've had... <laughs> Sounds we've right had, so far. <laughs> <laughs> we've had irrigation in the past, and it seems to have suddenly dried up. And then we got, well, this rather weird message delivered the other day. And, um, yeah, I, I normally I would take the time to deal with this kind of thing myself, but uh, there's a lot going on in White Spare right now, so I figured perhaps some adventurers like you might be willing to take a look instead. Well, uh, she produces a, um, basically a, <laughs> a, 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 like, uh, a, a, sorry, there's a, uh, like a, an animal skull almost <laughs> that she's carrying with her. <laughs> Uh, it's not a cat, is it? That is... It's not a cat. <laughs> um, and it's like, well, it was attached to this. There's this note put on it, uh, written in in blood. I don't know why you would write in blood. Ink is perfectly good, um, but yeah, I don't think we're dealing with maybe the most sophisticated For the people drama. here. <laughs> sure um so she unfolds the note and written in these really crude like big block letters it says you want water you come to headless angel sundown tomorrow so she sort of spreads that out on the table for you is the blood and, uh, still wet sh- it's dry it's pretty dry it's okay yeah okay just making sure and sheriff just to be clear you received this uh late yesterday yeah, I just mm. I just got this last night, and I, you know it took me a little while to figure out why somebody would send this message to us. I, I, I you know didn't really know what the deal was with water, but I think somebody might be causing this drought. How how does the water usually get to town? Like, are there aqueducts? <laughs> fall out of the clouds there, like most places. Yeah, like- <laughs> Well, like, I mean, could, could there be stonework involved? I'm really good at stonework. Mm. Well, um, you would probably know. Um, give me, uh, give me a quick history check, uh, oh. uh, Bella. <laughs> and you know what? Why don't you make? Why don't you make it with advantage? Because I'll tell you, it, it involves some d- dwarven related oh. things that I think you you might you might know about. Got a whopping twelve with with advantage. You did. That's not bad. Uh, you know that there is. Uh, uh, it's it's a good ways, uh, kind of uh, north and west of White Sparrow, but there is an ancient dwarven dam. Uh, that there's a kind of a dammed up lake that provides a steady flow of water to the valley uh, in and around White Sparrow. Uh, that you know is used to nourish crops and livestock. 
uh, and that it was probably set up hundreds of years ago by a coalition of dwarves. Uh, and it, it's, you know, it's probably long since been abandoned. It just kind of uh, operates on kind of autopilot. Uh, but, you know, it's a it's a famous dwarven landmark and, you know, another another testament to the quality of construction and planning that that dwarves are capable of. And is that in the direction that the note specified? Sorry, I lost track of those details. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with this headless angel. That is uh, presumably a location, uh, not a person. Um, but I don't I, know if you, that means anything to you. I have adventured pretty far and wide in this mm -hmm. land, but all right, I will say that you you th that that is a not. I don't know if you've been there before, but there is a landmark nearby, kind of in that general direction. Uh, that is a uh, it's a statue of an angel that uh, doesn't have a head anymore. Oh, okay, well. so I'll share that that you know, my, my knowledge of the dam and that I think it's near the area the note specifies. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to check whether or not the sheriff is telling us everything the sheriff knows about this? Sure. Mm -hmm. Roll insight. Okay. Uh, insight. Uh, 10 with my plus three advantage. The, you, it seems like the, the, the sheriff is being pretty transparent with, uh, with all of you. Okay. Well, this, this dam will have fish, and fish bring cats, then. And, ca I, and cats bring cat spit. And cats bring <laughs> cat spit. Especially after they've had some fish. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's important to remind everybody, you know, that the, the, the adventuring life can be, uh, it's it is a life uh, that very few in the world choose, and some of the people that choose it are among the most unique and interesting <laughs> um, creatures in all the world. That is a very uh, tactful way to put that. <laughs> Everyone knows if you want cats, you go to a lake. <laughs> <laughs> cats love swimming. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes I certainly do. Uh, so, a uh, newly assembled group here you're at, a, at a table. It's the weirdest uh, timeshare uh, scam I've seen yet. <laughs> uh, Sh Sheriff Ruth Willowmain has presented you with a note and a little bit of information, um, but you have not uh, kind of formally met each other. Or So I guess it's, it's, uh, it's up to you to decide if this is something you're interested in investigating and, and what you will do vis-a-vis uh, -vis that. Can I see that skull really quick? Uh, sure. Yeah, here you go. What kind of skull is this? Yes. Seems like some kind of canine. Mm. Mm. The natural enemy of the cat. Mm. Seems fresh. Just any cats? Domestic cats? Or are you okay with larger cats as well, like jaguars and pumas? Their spit is uh, very delectable. I know a tabaxi, and he seems like the kind who would drool on command. Uh. Are we getting a little distracted by all this cat spit? Because we're trying to get water for the town. I'm, I was just wondering if maybe we should come up with a plan and go out and to this, this headless angel place and find out what's up. My dear, my dear, is spit not just a form of water? Well, I don't know if you could generate it in sufficient quantities to take care of the entire town. It, I mean, we haven't found you? any cats yet. Sterilize it for feeding children and Act old yeah. Actually, split, spit is derived from blood. Oh. True fact. <laughs> oh, I say, real conversation killer there. Right. Right. <laughs> that is why it has the healing problem. Well, he asked. So would cat is blood it, work just as well, so, or does it need to be filtered through this feline salivary? Again, sense. we need to find some cats first. And <laughs> if cats are attracted by the lake, which is a dubious proposition to be sure, we're not finding any cats in the bar. I guess Sheriff, we would be happy to go to this headless angel. Where is it again? Oh, thank God. It's about 10 miles out of town. <laughs> it's... Is it possible to have a look at the cat at uh, the canine skull? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> and, and see yeah. if there's look any the obvious signs of what killed the animal. Mm. Uh, sure, give me a quick medicine check. Um. Uh, Nineteen, including mm. the advantage. Uh, well, uh, just looking at this, it looks like it's probably some kind of uh, some kind of dog. Um, it's it's still it's pretty fresh. There's you know the the there's still a lot of bits on the skull, for lack of a better word. Um, 
it is. It seems like at least a, a major contributor to its uh, cause of death is that it's not attached to the rest of the dog anymore. Um, but specifically, it does look like it was probably killed violently as opposed to uh, through any kinds of natural causes. Okay. So the people you're dealing with have murdered at least one dog. Serious business. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay. Wait, 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 before you go, let me be, let me be clear. Let me be clear. Uh, you, I, I would like to you to act as the representatives for the village. I don't want you to ne- necessarily negotiate or agree to anything. I just I want to find out the rest of what these people want, and then you can relay that back to me, and we'll figure out how to proceed from there. So just you know, take it easy, one step at a time. But if we do have to negotiate, what's our budget? There, <laughs> no <laughs> negotiating. Just relay courier message back to me. I'll figure it out. Are there any so you'll be here waiting for us. us. Is what you're saying. You're not uh, coming along you, with the sheriff. No, I, I have important business to see to here in town, and uh, I, I trust, I trust you. You seem very trustworthy. I, you know, here <laughs> you're I, great at your job. <laughs> yeah, I, I have more important things to be doing. So she flips like a, uh, you know, a few copper pieces to the uh, the bartender and says, like, you know, give him, give him some provisions for the road uh, yep. on me. The uh, the 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 barkeep behind the uh, the bar of the Ever Shady Tavern uh, starts preparing some uh, to go uh, snacks for you. The really the only uh, option they have that you are not consulted is they seem to basically have uh, bread bowls, which uh, you know it's basically a loaf of bread hollowed out and filled with onion soup, and then they put the cap on the back on it. And it's very uh, portable. There's just <laughs> yeah, say, that's it's, it's portable, but it's, a little you know, hard to delici- carry around at speed. You know. Yeah, you it think? is. It is delicious. <laughs> Uh, but soggy. The uh, the soup is uh, incredibly hot, uh, and it, it is it is a dangerous endeavor in that it is hard to transport. But you don't want to be carrying it too long uh, because of that. But at the same time, the soup is quite hot. So it's you know part of part of living in in and around White Sparrow is just figuring out how to get that how to really master when do you start chowing down on that bread bowl. But maybe, anyway, maybe they wouldn't be running out of water if they ate something besides soup once in a while. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. You upended the economy right, of the town. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Adventure what over. Soup in the serve? reservoir. We're all good. D- serving dried <laughs> soup. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hot and cold running French onion soup. <laughs> mm. Is there anything? What's French? Uh, is there anything <laughs> you would like to do <laughs> before you depart the town of Whitesboro? Is it possible to check whether or not magic has been used to create this node? Uh, it is totally possible to do all that. Right. Would you like to do that? Is that rolling arcana? Yeah. Cool. Uh, I got eight, so. Uh, Doesn't seem like it. Well, okay. so I will also roll Arcana if that's okay. Yep. Um, as a cleric. Yes, uh, you have a considerably better chance than me, the bard. Yeah, 11. <laughs> Does not, just seems like your traditional blood note. Possibly, you're starting to think like possibly written in dog's blood. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah, Maybe not, there's not, out there's. Of it. Um, well, it's, again, it's, it's a dog. Adult, yeah. Um, they yeah, have no totally properties. wrong. Yeah. Um, canon. Um, th- so. <laughs> now, yep. as a bugbear, am I canine or am I more related to the ursine family? Or I had been am thinking I an about, insect? I, I had been thinking about that for about 20 minutes. Monty. <laughs> 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 There's a chance I'm part cat. Right. <laughs> there, there is a non-zero chance. You are perhaps adding to the confusion, uh, uh, Krong, I believe you are still wearing your uh, Cool Cat t-shirt. Um, <laughs> nope. Which... <laughs> as soon as Cool Cat w- walked around the corner, oh. I ripped that thing off. Oh, I apologize. I didn't update your avatar with that. Um, um, so, all right. Well, if that is, uh, if you are prepared to hit the road, uh, you are a newly formed group of adventurers, hopefully uh, looking forward to being forged as a as a, a, a group of, of crusaders and, and people who are just going to right all kinds of wrongs and or hide in spooky corners uh, in the case of Krong. Uh, ready to, uh, to, to, to set the world right. Um, so... Um, Does someone have the map to... and the skull with them? I think we should take them along. Yep. And so a it's note. a note and a... Yeah. And the note, yeah. sorry. There, I don't think there's, there's no, no map. I don't know if there's... Not a map. There's no Wishful map. Wishful thinking, no map. Right. Just a <laughs> yeah. Note. 
Um, well, I think some of you, uh, at the very least, uh, Belen had asked and has, has traveled around, uh, White Sparrow enough. Uh, you know that the, uh, this, this, uh, Headless Angel landmark is basically due west of, um, of, of the town. I of imagine Marrow. it's pretty easy to spot. It sounds like a big yeah. thing. Oh wow! This it's a big thing. This dam looks like we're in trouble if something happens to it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm showing them the world yes. map. The dam is quite impressive looking in the uh, the northwest yes. corner. All right. So let's see here. Do, do, do. Is that an oil derrick to the east of the town? Uh, that was there was a um uh a what call it a uh a, a mining uh settlement that people went to that's the that is the well of the black sun that yeah. some people to, went to to the to the west of the town is the great land of teha mm. teha <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh you travel it takes you a while uh, to head over country uh over the countryside uh the terrain here is somewhat rocky and uh atop a rocky hill there's kind of the ruins of an old fortress uh that has been long since reclaimed by the wilderness there's briars and 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 all kinds of vegetation growing up around the ancient uh, foundation of, of whatever the structure once was. And the kind of central landmark here is a headless angel statue. It's a large stone statue of a kneeling angel, uh, hands outstretched and palms up. I guess you can mainly tell it's an angel by its kind of artistic wings on its back. Uh, and someone has placed the remains of a dead goat in one of the statue's hands. Its entrails are kind of spilling out. Uh, so here on the map that I've shown you, uh, which hopefully you can see okay, mm -hmm. there is a, a statue in the center uh, with two outstretched hands. Um, uh, in the other hand is a pyramid of skulls. Uh, you notice some kind of movement and uh, popping out from kind of uh, on top of the statue, there is a goblin sitting atop the left shoulder of the, the, the angel. <laughs> he's, he's smiling Giving at it you. bad advice and on the right <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> yeah, a really great goblin. <laughs> um, uh, he's, he's smiling at you. He waves at you as you kind of trudge up the hill in the direction of the statue. Uh, he's clearly making no attempt to, to hide. He's just kind of sitting there swinging his legs back and forth as if there's just what could, what could be a better way to spend an afternoon than sitting on the statue of a headless angel and to play that goblin uh we've really spared no expense here we brought in one of our best uh total party kill players please welcome to the podcast dan morgan sorry who <laughs> uh -huh. ah you want water you join the kingdom of the red water queen you give us 1000 gold piece each new moon First, bring 2,000 gold piece tomorrow at the same time, and we give you water. Deal? It's a deal. Let me tell you, it's a good deal. Well, I sir, like... I like cats. I, I got no cats for you. I got, oh, got water. I'd like to look around and see whether or not this goblin is definitely alone. All right, give me a quick perception check. Yeah. Uh, 22. All right. Peering around with your, uh, insightful, and I guess, uh, perceptive eyes, uh, you notice that this goblin is not alone. Though the goblin is standing out in the open, you notice several other shapes and forms uh, kind of lurking, creeping abound in the, uh, the uh, the brush and in the uh, the foliage around the site, and it does seem like this goblin is accompanied by several other goblins and even <gasps> some bugbears, large uh, kind of burly cr goblinoid creatures like your friend Krong. Uh, but yeah, it seems like uh, this this though this uh, goblin sitting atop the statue is the spokesman. Uh, there are a good ten other creatures lurking around uh -huh. uh, attempting to, to hide from I'm you. I'm kind of wishing so. I hadn't done that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Better to know than this not happened. to know, I guess. Great. The goblin sees you uh, looking around and just gives you kind of like a wink like it. Eh? <laughs> Balance. So Gamica, you, you, you are... You are you are aware of this. Uh, your, your, your colleagues are not aware that you have um, 
noticed okay. 10, uh, 10 other creatures uh, lurking around. Well, so yeah, so Bellin starts heading up the path so that you're not having this conversation shouting from the top of the hill to the oh, bottom of the hill. Oh, that's not why I'm heading up the path. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's one. <laughs> All right, well, right, right behind you, Bellin, right behind, behind you. Like, for my morning star. I, just I would like to path. quickly mention that there are at least 10 other goblins that are spotted uh, to the rest of the party so that everybody is aware that we're not, you know, I, I keep walking one. up the path. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going okay. to put an arrow I would like in to my look around to see these later. 10 other goblins. Uh, give me, uh, at this point, uh, you would have advantage because you know what you're looking for. Krong, feel free to give me a, uh, a quick perception check with advantage. I'll do it too. Total of 12. Uh, you spot some in the foliage, but you don't see the whole ten that um, do, uh, Jemica had I mentioned. Do I see Jemica. the bugbears? Yeah, I think uh, you know what we'll say that you see a bugbear, uh, and see here on the map they don't have little labels, but uh, this furry individual. Uh, there's two of them, kind of right on the edges of this uh, the the fortification here. Uh, this individual on the east side and this one, well, I flipped them east and west, uh, look like you, I'm going to say you notice at least one, probably you smell them, uh, uh, Krong, bugbears. Mm. I will call out in bugbear. Mm. Is, that, is that is that an actual language in d and I don't know. I think they speak okay. goblin. Okay, canon. <laughs> oh. Okay. I mean, the, it's, it's, it's at least a dialect of goblin, right? Yeah. The languages that I've listed are common goblin and thieves can't, but. Okay. So I guess in the yeah, bugbear bugbear dialect, goblin. yeah, yeah. They said Zumapel Krong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to decide how I sound when I don't have an accent. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they sent us here to kill you. You probably want to run. Uh, everyone else the, that's uh, like, yeah. <laughs> I speak goblin. I understood that. Mm. <laughs> mm. It was it was probably a little hard to tell. The accents a little uh, different. If you might, yeah, yeah, the accents a little different. But uh, but yeah, uh, you hear. Uh, I guess at this point they're willing to give away uh, their uh, uh, position. Two uh, hulking monsters, nightmare creatures like Krong, step out of the foliage. Uh, so it's now clear that uh, the goblin atop the angel statue is not alone. And uh, the uh, the first one just kind of cracks his knuckles and says, "We'll see about that." Okay. Uh, Dan, your peaceful negotiations are getting out of hand. All right, let's all settle down here. We we it we can do this like business people. All we need is a deposit of some money, and the water shall flow from the the red water queen. Well, why is the water not flowing? Oh well, the red water queen, in her infinite wisdom, has decided that. Uh, only those who can pay shall reap the bounties of the water. And uh, I'm afraid that's that's just how it is now. What are you going to do with the money? Oh, Nothing well. to spend it on out here. <laughs> we can I, water, am I right? Do we know that they actually have control of the water? Can we, can we find out whether their threats are empty? Would insight uh, be a thing? Yeah, that would be a great insight check. Uh, so, Caleb, give us an insight check. Um, I have. I didn't roll. Sorry. Eleven. All right. I don't think you have any reason uh, to doubt the claim so far, though. You know that is a pretty bold claim. Um, I would like to ask a question persuasively as whether or not it is possible to meet the queen of this red water. All right, uh, give us a quick uh, persuasion check. 22. We'll Grin feels ab- uh, all right, can you just tell us what that sounds like, and then we'll see how Grin reacts to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems like that was pretty convincing. Would it be at all possible to meet this wonderful queen who is in control of this wonderful situation? Oh, well, I, I, I suppose something could be arranged, but I, I think... She's likely to only want to meet people who are part of the uh, the Red Water Kingdom, and and that's going to require that just that that down payment there. Well, we we can't possibly give a down payment without meeting the club president, and in this we have case, to do our due diligence. In this case, that is the queen. 
uh, that as may be, uh, I am I am just the representative of the Red Water Queen, and uh, I do what she's told me to do. In this case, that is charging you two thousand gold pieces. What? You can charge the city two thousand gold pieces after we meet with the queen. The, this is quite a lot of money to give up. And I still have not seen any cats. So I don't know why he's on about cats. Like he's got the grins looking at the other goblins. Like, do you see any cats? Do you see any cats? The, the, the bugbear just shrugs. So, uh, I would like to um, use persuasion to try mm-hmm. and use this, this uh, the cat maneuver in order mm-hmm. to uh, get access to the Red Queen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just for a uh, perspective for our adventures here, uh, 2,000 gold pieces is a lot, lot of, of, yeah. of yeah. money. You know, uh, probably, you know, I, I, I just like, uh, you know, a single gold piece is going to probably more than cover a night stay in a in, in an inn uh, or, and, you know, and several meals and what like that. So that 2,000 is... is you know, a, a great deal of wealth, even for uh, a town, let alone a small town like White Sparrow. Um, so, um, but Evanon, please continue. Yes, so if, you, if you'd like us to spend this great sum of money, we first must see that everything is legit. Can we see the water? Can we see the queen? What can we do? And uh, so uh, I don't know if that was charm or persuasion, but I am trying to. Uh, I think it's persuasion. Right. And I would even say I would say you have advantage oh, um, okay. because Rosemary did a really good persuasion check already. And All you've right. been relatively diplomatic so far. So, yeah, well, uh, I'm glad it's, it's with advantage because I crit failed the first one. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> 17 on my second check. Nice. Um, all right. Um, uh, the, uh, one of the bugbears, uh, signals, signals, uh, grin that they want to have like a, it gives them like a timeout symbol. Um, <laughs> it's so hard to find good help these days. Um, I would just like to take a quick moment to check how far away are we from this goblin? In still, pretty uh, still pretty far. You've been, uh, let's see, in roll 20. I think you are. This is kind of a weird conversation you have, but you know, <laughs> like yelling down. Right. Yeah, hey! yelling, yell, yeah, yeah. You're you're forty feet away from him, right. yelling back and forth, and he's kind of up on a hill on top of the statue, and you're yelling back and forth at him. But you know, this is how we this is how we have these adventures in the wilderness. Right. Uh, I would say if you had wanted to slowly be walking up the hill, uh, you are free to move yourselves up the hill a decent amount. Um, but you know, probably. You're not. You don't want to be like right next to the goblin or his bugbear friends. Um, you know the uh, so the bugbear, uh, the bugbear and the uh, and and grin the goblin have a quick uh, sidebar. Um, we not gonna like this. No, I don't think she is. I, I but I don't know what to do. They want the proof. I I guess maybe maybe, maybe we take one 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 person meet queen. Oh okay yeah which uh, maybe. Uh, maybe the, the what do you think the lady in the pink dress? She was very she was very nice. I think the queen would like her. You the smart one, Grin. You decide. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you you. What was it? What was your name? Uh, Gam Eka. Gam Eka is a good name. Uh, <laughs> I, I suppose we could take you to meet the queen, uh, but your friends are gonna have to stay here. Um, I would like to persuasively ask if it would be possible for me to not go alone as it, Grin clearly also has a companion, um, and I feel a little bit, uh, overwhelmed with the awe of meeting the queen. Mm. Do Mm. I need to roll persuasion for that? Yeah, very much so. (laughs) All right. I got 18. Oh, all right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, okay. Um, well, maybe maybe two then. Two of you. Um, you can bring one friend. You and a friend. I bring a friend. You bring a friend. <laughs> all right. I think Anavon is probably going to be a, a a very 
uh, you know, diplomatic companion here. With, uh, I volunteer as tribute. Thank I, you. <laughs> I, I, I oh, kind of love guy. This is going to be great. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we should go separately. I think all of us should go, or none of us should go. Oh. Don't mm-hmm. split the party. Don't split we the party. We are a brand new group. It's important for team unity. Yeah. <laughs> to be on this, the same page. This is true. But they also started with only wanting one of us to go with them. Right. So we're already so, at two now. Right. We've I'm doubled, ready to fight. Doubled our we, I'm, yeah. we, I'll, just, I'll just take my morning star to all of them. I don't care. <laughs> oh. How far back up the path can I go? Yeah, we don't have... <laughs> <Right. laughs> Is there any advantage to leaving somebody here? Because two will go off to the queen, but there will still be a bunch of creatures here. And I don't know that there's any greater risk of losing access to the water. Just thinking out loud, if you guys want to go, I'm happy. If, mm. if they'll let us, I'm happy to go along. But should we have a rear guard as well? Mm. I don't think I care I, what happens to the headless angel. I agree. <laughs> this is just a landmark. I think the concern is always. What uh, are we possible you know, for? You are, you are very outnumbered already. Right. Yeah. Sending only a small group to a, a, a stronghold is, very true. is is fraught with danger. Is it possible for other people to follow stealthily? Should we fail to persuade Grin to allow the rest of the party to come? No, I think it's certain. Well, depends. I'm on wearing chainmail. <laughs> I I, yeah. I have disadvantage okay. on all my checks, so no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can like I can ghost. do stealth. I will if, always if... be behind you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm behind you right now. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm behind you. But anyway. <laughs> Wait, are we just standing back to back? It's Hang on, this is a right. dumb conversation. <laughs> Turn around. All right, here we go. Hmm. Look, I can tell you've got some reluctance here. If you want, you come back tomorrow. You take the night. You think about it. Uh, and we'll meet again here tomorrow. Just, you know, uh, consider bringing the gold if you want the water. And I, I imagine the village could use some water. The crops, they're not looking so good. Did you kill that goat? What, this this goat? Yeah, the goat on the hand right below you. The the dead goat right here. I, the, yeah, you know, the dead goat is the one I'm asking if you killed. Uh, I, you know, I can't say for sure. I'm neither here nor there, really. I don't see why we're talking about a dead goat when we're discussing much more think, important matters. I just think it's weird that you're on top of a statue with a... Well, I think it's weird that you're down there goat. yelling at me from 40 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you don't want me yelling at you from closer. <laughs> that is true. I, I'm sensing I got my own that, for that our <laughs> hesitance is a little surprising to these folks and that because they've been willing to accede to at least one of our demands to take somebody to the queen. I wonder if there's something we can learn about their actual comfort level with their threats. So per- mm. perception check would be mm. what I would propose. Uh, perception's usually for looking around with your eyes. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you're looking more of an insight. insight. Insight, would that be insight. it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, give me insight. I might need a little bit more help on what you're looking for with I'm, insight. I guess I'm to looking the gaps. for sort of hesitancy or weakness um, in his, sure. uh, not not physical presence so much, but his threat level toward us because mm-hmm. he's apparently, and whether he's surprised at our resistance to his demands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So give me a quick so, insight check there, Kayla. All right. We have a 12. 12. Uh, it does seem like this conversation is not going the way this goblin expected. I think both in terms of some of your behavior uh, <laughs> as well as uh, I'm, I, I think he, the goblin kind of thought this would be, would be simple. He would, he would demand a bunch of money. He would return with a bunch of money and everything uh, would be, you know, this, this meeting has gone on a lot longer than the goblin expected. Uh, and I think he is, uh, he's a little bit on his back feet at this point now, not really sure how to handle uh, the various requests and demands you have made of him. Is what I'll give you for that insight check. How's that? That's that's good. That's fair. Yeah. So. I mean, we could. So, I, adventurers, you are at a, a an interesting crossroads yeah. here. A you know, some demands have been made of you. Some of them are reasonable, and some of them are well. Actually, I'm not really clear if any of them are reasonable. <laughs> right. uh, some and, of them and, appear and to be it, less unreasonable than others. And, yeah. and we're not yeah. in a position to, to meet you. the demands, even if we wanted to. So yeah, and it's up to you. Certainly, do not have a thousand gold pieces between you or anywhere even close to that. And we just got to um, this town, so even if we did, yeah. I'm not sure. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think there's some tactical decisions about how you want to deal with this for you to make. Uh, it is. Can't I mean, spell I think, tactical uh, uh, without cat. Mm, <laughs> true. Uh, and Aline has. Aline has pointed out that you know you, you're you're new to traveling together. You have different kind of strengths and weaknesses in terms of your abilities to be stealthy, your abilities to be persuasive, your abilities to use magic. Uh, you may wish to have a quick sidebar uh, without without Grin, um, without the goblin uh, uh, to try and figure out what you're going to do as the goblin waits impatiently, really hoping that one of you will just produce a large amount of money very soon. I have slowly been making my way up the path. Yeah. With my hand on mm-hmm. the morning star, just, yes. just you mm-hmm. know, um, yeah, yeah, just, just stretching your legs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tony, can I, can I ask you a question? Is Grin visibly armed? Uh, I think he's got a, he's got a, 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 a sword on his belt. Okay. Yeah. How's that? So um, you know, he's that? he's got a hand on that. Maybe if he sees uh, uh, Bellin coming up the path there, just like you know, yeah. not doing anything. Just like I, I yeah. also have a weapon. <laughs> Just checking, checking that his belt's check still in on. The, yeah, but check, uh, my sword's still there. Can I do a yeah, quick the, uh, perception check and see whether or not the other goblins and bugbears that I can see are armed? Yeah, you don't even need to check. The The bugbears are uh, just standing there with... Uh, they've got morning stars. Uh, the goblins that you saw before hanging out in the various bushes uh, have an assortment of swords and, uh, and bows and arrows uh, out. Uh, you know, they're not pointed at you, but they're they're ready to, to ready to throw down if it if it comes to it. They did. They did not show up for this. Uh, this uh, parlay uh, unarmed. Mm. Well, I say we hit uh, them. Can we do a quick sidebar? Yeah. I say we hit mm-hmm. them. Sure. Yep. Uh, well, I mean, we could hit them. I have. We, I could definitely but hit them. Yeah, I like I, hitting them. <laughs> I have thunderwave, but maybe this is not the so, best idea. So we're, we're not going to get any information out of them if, we if hit we, them. we're outnumbered. But if we hit them, we will make them less. Uh, Sure of be, themselves. Well, we're going to make them angry Less first. numbered, but we will. But we will make them angry, and some of us could end up paying a price. And you know, as as these much as I love a to, mystery, I don't know that I want to die for it. I don't know if these are the ones we want to kill anyway. We need no. to find the queen. That's probably I don't care a good about point. Killing them, we could tie them up. All of them. That's a lot you of. Lot we have rope. Up. We yeah. have a lot of rope. You have a lot. Yeah, between the five of you, you have a lot of rope. Just to be clear. Okay. <laughs> but we have to get close enough to tie I have a question. Them. These bugbears, yeah, you hit them they, and then you how them easily do they cut through rope? Uh, you can restrain them. It would be, you know, it, it, you know. It, let me just say, you would not tie them up while they're cautious. That's not mm-hmm. going to be. Did the, the two of you who were going to go and visit the queen, the one of you who was invited and the one of you who was allowed to come along, are you eager to go? Are you Are you ready to go? Not particularly Ugh. eager to go, but thinking that that's possibly going to get us in the right direction of information. The, I feel the, like you're right about that, but that's easy for knows. me to say. The queen knows, and we need to know. We don't know. So we need to know what the queen knows, you know? You just want to see if And she have might cats. have cats. <laughs> this is she, very true. There might she, be cats. She may have cats. The goblins like cats. Don't Goblins go. are They're pretty tasty. Yeah. As pets are for dinner. Yes. Yes, a hundred percent. So do some bugbears. Okay. Mm. Does so. our bugbear like cats? That's you, Krunk. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> I said, does our Sorry, bugbear I was thinking like about cats. <laughs> <laughs> I said, does cats. Our bugbear I think, likes cats. I think the, I think the answer is yes. Mm. Uh, I I like I know one cat I like very much. Okay. Mm. Does it taste cool good cat. on toast? Uh, he likes to boogie boogie boo. That's all. I'm yes, hundred percent sure. Of. He's a cool cat. Uh, well, I say we go see the queen. I, I say we yes. get information. Is it possible to look around and see whether or not anything here has been done with magic? And maybe um, uh, Enavan can check to see whether or not there's magic here which is causing problems in this area Ah. all right i will do an arcana check if that is okay with the dm do it all right and uh enavan gets a 14 does not seem like there's anything magical going on here on this little hilltop ruins just the mad the natural magic that is goblin yes 
I just don't think killing these guys achieves anything. Yeah. So yeah. you have, no, I uh, agree. just to, to recap, you've got, I mean, I guess Aline, uh, well, Bellin. Bellin is pro violence. Right. Yes. <laughs> Other people happy, happy to send I mean, some, some, some selves along to meet with the queen. Uh, uh, yeah, so, but so you have a couple options for how you could handle this. There's no right way to do, to, to do the adventure, so you get to decide what you know what makes sense to your characters and what you what choices you want to make. I'm just saying, if we hit them enough, they will have no choice but to let us all go. <laughs> we can I mean, all, we can right also now. try persuading We're not them. Prisoners. That is an option. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, take us to the queen, not leave right. the area. <laughs> yes. But we could I also don't think try even persuading if we persuade them. Of this. But if we persuaded them, if they, they go back to the queen and say, we like these guys, I don't know that the queen would be receptive to that. I mean, I don't well, think they're going to ask the queen. I think they're just going to take us there. Right. Well, it can't hurt to try. Right. I see. We start going and everyone goes with us. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Make yeah. them try to stop us. Love right. it. Let's go. Okay. Or we could follow at a distance if they if they try to stop us, let the two go forward and the rest of us could follow at a distance. Yes, and then we get squished. <laughs> well, we don't want you to get squished. We're we're not we're, we're I'm just thinking, you know. especially if Bellin is, is quite far away, then we're we're I I'm possibly in danger and I have my own interests at heart. <laughs> I'm supposed and to be sitting hey, around playing a vial, you know. Hey Grin. Grin, gobble. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're all going. You're all going where? Like, you're leaving? We, we no, haven't we're all going our along on this visit to the queen. The five uh, of us and however many of you you want to come along are going to visit the queen. I don't, I don't think that's... But you need us. We're the, we're the people. I mean, you need us. We got the water. And sure we have the gold. We speak for the town. Do you have gold? I don't see any gold. I've, I've been you, just, if you gave me the gold, I, don't I can make this whole problem water. go away. I we're don't not giving you gold. Water. We don't negotiate with goblins on statues. We negotiate with <laughs> That's <the> very specific. <laughs> yeah, bad news for you, huh? <laughs> We're a new group. We've got one bylaw. And it's about <laughs> right. Could I You're not intimidated you by goats and their dead entrails. Could I possibly use Mage Hand to create the illusion of uh, some gold? Uh, nope, Mage Hand is a very specific spell. It creates the illusion of a magic hand. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna just like s say we are all going. I'm rolling an intimidation check as I. All right, mm. Krong, were you also attempting to do an intimidate? Yes, I was. All right, it seems like why don't uh, let's let's say that it's basically uh, you are helping. Why don't each of you roll intimidate? Whoever gets higher is what will count. It's in. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> right. Should I? Should I potentially? We're new. Also help we don't. Here? We don't have this. Yeah, I could help. I, it's it's a, it's enough. Uh, or no, there. Um, it's what we've done is sufficient. Uh, Grin does not seem impressed by you. Uh, you know, Grin looks around, and remembers to count how many uh, yeah. of his. Uh, I got two uh, bugbears. Uh, you got one bugbear already. I'm coming out ahead. Hey, who taught you how to count all the way up to two? You stupid goblin. <laughs> I, I got fingers. I would like to persuasively say if he has two buckbears, then of course we are outnumbered and therefore um, he should not be scared by No, us. you're not going to be fooling me with your, your fancy logic arguments. Try right. a quick persuasion. You win the argument. Persuasion. Let's all go meet the queen now. <laughs> uh, quick persuasion check, but it's with disadvantage because you have already threatened him, basically. Yeah. Uh, how do I disadvantage on this? So you, you still well, roll yeah. twice. You take yeah, the lowest. Yeah. Lois is five. Things are not going well in your negotiations at this point. I think Grim, uh, Grin has turned against you. Uh, he is distraught about the lack of money that he's got to hand over to his queen. And it's, uh, I don't know, it seems like probably things are about to break down here. Uh, Grin? S so... Uh. Maybe you don't get any water. Maybe that's how this goes. We go back to the queen. We say they don't want water, and we all go our separate ways. Ways enjoy your dried out crops. We don't live so, here. We can go somewhere where there is water. We have no actual investment in your disagreement. <laughs> you don't own all the water. <laughs> this is getting too philosophical for me. So, that's why we I really want to meet this queen. I can't wait to find out what she's about, and I really so, think we should move uh, forward with that, y'all. I, I think they, the the goblins are losing their patience here, Tony. Right. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Ennevin, yeah. you wanted to do something? Yeah. So Ennevin wants to pull out a copper piece, 
But mm. before he pulls out that copper piece, he uses the cantrip light on this copper mm. piece. And he turns that copper piece to appear gold mm. and bright okay. and shiny. And he takes it out of his out of his purse, his coin purse, and he mm-hmm. sticks it up in the air. This is what you want. If you want more of these, then you will do as we ask. We only want to see the queen because she makes the rules. You just follow those rules. There's no need to be insulting. I think I think I'm I think I'm done talking to you. I think Was you guys are leave Can I or else uh, Grin's going to pull out in in addition to his uh, short sword he has a short bow and he's going to pull that out and kind of uh, knock an arrow. He's not necessarily like gone as far as pointing it at you, but he has got an arrow and he is ready to use it. I think you guys should get going and let me help you on your way. And Grin is going to immediately pull back an arrow from his short bow and let fire at whoever is at the front of that line, which appears to be Enavon the Cleric. Okay, wow. Unprovoked. Uh, Grin. So are we in initiative <laughs> Unprovoked. now? I, I, I think we are about to be in initiative order. Uh, Enavon, I'm sorry, Grin, why don't you roll me a quick short bow attack? And right. we'll see how that happens. Uh, adventures, it seems like things have turned south. Uh, I would encourage you all to roll initiative. That's, you'll roll a d20, and you have an initiative modifier. Um, and I guess I'm going to have to do that for uh, for all the other creatures. Oh, gosh. All those other creatures. How terrible Such a waste to roll so, initiative for people that will be dead so, so soon. <laughs> So it looks like uh, Grin the Goblin has rolled. Uh, oh no, that's Monty's. Uh, yes. roll. Grin, Grin, how'd you do? Grin rolled an eleven. Uh, uh, so Enovan, how does an eleven do versus your armor class? That misses. All right. Well, you have not. Good news. You have not taken an arrow to the knee. Uh, bad news. Negotiations have reached the uh, the stage of violence. Uh, so I am going to ask each of you to uh, roll some initiative. And I'm going to put these in this little initiative tracker here in roll 20. Grin, can you roll initiative for you? And I'll roll for the bugbear. Um, sure thing. I was looking for the wrong You're going to need to give me the uh, ability to do it there, Tony. So I have to give you the ability to do it, you say. Let's see here. You don't have to. I have to. Well, I've done it. I'm starting right. to like the beeping. <laughs> it's like a metronome. It's, yes, yeah. it's gone. <laughs> Keeps everyone on track. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. yep. All right. Let's see. Uh, Krong has put in initiative of seventeen. Other people, you may be able to put initiative, or you can just tell me initiative, and I'll oh, type it in. Uh, yeah. So um, my first net twenty of the day <gasps> is for okay. initiative. Do you have a modifier to that twenty, or yeah, just twenty-one? All right. 21. Bold. Uh, Rosemary has typed in 12. But I did not add my plus to initiative oh. to that. So it's 14. So 14. All right. Um, Bellin, how you doing? Five. Oh, you got yeah. it in there already. Right. Uh, and it looks like Grin has put it in. So it looks like everybody is in there. Let me just resort these. So first at the top of the group, it's going to be Enavon, followed by Krong, followed by Grin the Goblin, representative of the Queen of Redwater, followed by Jemeka, um, followed by two menacing bugbears, followed by eight annoying looking goblins, uh, followed by Belen, and finally... Uh, Kaleth at the end. So we are in combat. This will be the first combat for some people, so we'll move at whatever pace we can. Uh, Enovin, you are first. Take it away. Uh, so Enovin is none too pleased with the fact that the arrow was shot at him um, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, looks directly at Grin, and Grin notices that the look in... Uh, in Enovan's eyes is somewhat different than it was before. There seems to be like a fire in his eyes, Mm. um, a a menace of, of sorts. Um, When Enovan casts command on, 
on Grin. Um, he, uh, he, he looks at Grin and he says, Grovel. And uh, okay. so that is, you have to uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, um, goblins, not known for their wisdom. Right. <laughs> um, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I'm guessing he needed more than a six. Uh, he did. And uh, so, yeah, so he now, uh, he now has to fall prone. Okay. He, he, yeah, so he is now groveling at the feet of Enovan. A, a, well, he, so he's on a statue. Right. How's that going to go well, for well, him? So, <laughs> yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess that's up for the the DM to decide. Tony, uh, yeah, was mm-hmm. he if he if he is uh, on a statue and, and he is forced to grovel, is he? Uh, I think I think it's going to be very hard to grovel on a statue. Let me just roll a d twenty here and say, yeah, you are. Uh, uh, so. Again, Grin was kind of like perched on the shoulder of this headless angel, uh, just hanging there. And you, I think he falls prone, which basically uh, is a face plant into the uh, the ground in front of him. Uh, Grin, thankfully, you weren't that high up. Oh, but you land on your face for six <laughs> face. Six face damage. Uh, Six now face that's some damage. good groveling. Yes. If you don't yeah, get right. face damage, are you really groveling? Yeah. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Dan, I'll note no. down six six damage there. Uh, Grin is not looking great. Uh, face down in the in the mud, no longer perched uh, atop a statue, bedecked with skulls and goat corporate corpses, which is you know seems like Grin's preferred element. Um, yeah, wow. Enovan, strong strong opening turn. Anything else? Uh, yeah. So as uh, his bonus action, uh, he will cast a shield of faith. Uh, oh no no no! I can't cast two two spells at the same time. So, uh, as his bonus action, he will sit there and um, look look uh, very very upset. And uh, with his pixie cut, he will move his hair and his bangs kind of whip in the air a little. Mm-hmm. That's his, that's All his right. bonus action. Excellent. Uh, Krong, you are next. I would like to proceed up the hill to here, Mm -hmm. then finding myself largely obscured from this bugbear by the corner of this rock. Yeah, there's there's a lot of rubble here for provides a lot a lot of lurking space in this. Ah, I heard I heard there was some gravel too. I was not super paying attention. (laughs) Uh, I would like to do as my bonus action. I would like to do a cunning action hide, Mm -hmm. and I rolled a twenty five on stealth. It's the bugbear assumes that you have gone to another town. <laughs> oh, and almost immediately, a long, hairy arm shoots out round the corner of the rock, and I have reach because of how bugbears are mm-hmm. shaped, and I'm going to stab that bugbear in the face with my rapier. What? Wow, bugbear versus bugbear. What, More what it face always damage. comes down to. Yeah. Mm. And I wrote this down. Okay. I apologize for delay here. I rolled a twelve to hit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The uh, the bugbear kind of nimbly ducks out of the way, uh, oh, perhaps knowing hang on, that. Hang on, hang <gasps> on. You did say I was hidden, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, then you surely have advantage, I have advantage maybe? on this attack. Surely. Sorry, I forgot the. Whole Don't call this bugbear surely. So, I've I've also as I stab- despite someone someone who plays Dungeons and Dragons three times a week <laughs> forget how it works <laughs> at least at least every twenty. It makes me hours. feel so much better. <laughs> I have actually yeah. rolled a seventeen to stab Shirley. All right. Uh, Shirley the bugbear gets stabbed in the face um, by your 17 uh, attack with your sword. Um, Roll me some damage. Okay. Well, counting the 2d6 um, sneak attack damage, that's 19. But you would say, Shirley, uh, was this creature surprised? Uh, I think so. I'm surprised. Oh, in that case, I get this extra surprise attack damage, don't I? Really? Wow. Well, that's what it says. Once per combat, if you surprise a creature and hit it with an attack on your first turn in combat. Ooh. So a total of 26 damage. Wow. Wow. 
Uh, just to be clear to our, our other new newer adventurers, <laughs> 26 damage is a devastating amount of damage that probably would have slain many of you. Uh, Krong has, has snuck up here in the rubble, conceals himself in the shadow, and then his giant long arms have just reached out and just stabbed that bugbear in the face. Somehow that bugbear is on his feet, but just barely having taken just a an amount of damage that I think would have probably dropped many, if not all of you. Um, and this once fearsome nightmare monster uh, is not looking so great because you have a fearsome nightmare monster of your own. All right. Uh, next up is Grin the Goblin. Now, Grin, I believe you basically have to spend your turn uh, taking no actions and groveling because of the uh, command. I'm really board. sorry. I'm just doing my job. I, she tells me to come to collect the money. I'm sorry. You guys seem you seem really nice. Oh God, Shirley Shirley owes me like like ten copper pieces. <laughs> oh, this is not going well. Shirley gives you a blood blood trenched glare. <laughs> don't, don't play poker with me. I'm no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. All right. Uh, well, very bold, strong turns for team. Uh, not not on the the Queen of Redwater side. Uh, <laughs> Gem Akka, you best are team next. Name ever. <laughs> yeah, sure. you know. Yeah, it's it's hard to fit it all uh, yeah, on on the back of the jersey. So, uh, Rosemary, just to recap for our our newer listeners uh, or adventurers, you are in combat. You have kind of a finite set of actions that you can do. Uh, one of them being what is in Dungeons and Dragons simply referred to as an action, which is usually like an attack or a spell. Uh, you can also move, which is determined by your speed, and then you maybe also be able to do some bonus actions or free actions, which are usually kind of smaller smaller things in combat. Well, I would like to use my cantrip of Vicious Mockery on Shirley mm. the Bugbear. All right. And <laughs> my, uh, just to be very clear, I am mocking, your fur is so fluffy, but yet covered in blood. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, no. Oh, dang, you literally added insult to injury. <laughs> <laughs> So, I believe with Vicious Mockery, the bugbear needs to make a wisdom saving throw against your spell, spell I'm thing. I'm double checking. Uh, yes, attack save is wisdom 12. All right, bugbear's rolling. Bugbear has rolled an 11, which traditionally is less than 12. What happens to this bugbear that has been viciously mocked? Uh, well, there is four Vicious Mockery damage, I'm afraid, for the oh-so-fluffy blood-covered fur. Is it four or is it a D4? A D4. Uh, that is one D4, and I clicked on it, so it came up with four. So you rolled a four. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> this is bad, uh, uh, Jemeka. The bugbear has already been stabbed in the face by Krong and has taken your words to heart and just kind of hits the ground, <laughs> writhing, holding its bloody, bloody head as your insult murdered it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there would be some other effects to the bugbear if it was not dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else? You could move if you wanted. Um, I don't know where you want to be on the hillside. Um, I'm going to move up behind Kron. Because right. he's, you know, also fluffy, but a nice bugbear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next up is Team <laughs> Bugbear. Well, Team Bugbear is, I guess, can you have a team of one? Um, no. Oh, well, next up is the bugbear. We have not had the pleasure of meeting uh, or learning the name Curly. of yet. Um, Hurley? Hurley Curly. the bugbear? Cannon? Yeah. Cur okay. Curly and Shirley. Yeah. That's how I pick my bugbears. I like ones that rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so this bugbear uh, sees that uh, Jemica, Caleb, is that where you were? You, you had already kind of started the fight halfway up the hill? Uh, I moved a little bit, so I need to wait for my turn in order to move. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, turn, let me go. yeah, I'm you wouldn't get to move until your turn. I'm bad. This is where I was. There we go. Sorry. All right. I'll fight when it's my so turn. So the it. important thing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The important thing there is I don't think anybody uh, was within uh, thirty feet of no. the uh, the bugbear, which the bugbear would have liked. So uh, hold on, let me just put in the name for this bugbear so that I remember. Oh, he just wants friends. <laughs> yeah. Be my guest. Um, so, let's see. Uh, Curly the bugbear is here uh, and does not like this 
group of adventurers moving up the hill. Um, so uh, Curly reaches, he's carrying a morning star, but also has several javelins strapped to his back. He reaches out and pulls out a javelin, and I think he is just going to lob a pointed javelin at Gemica and see how that goes. Uh, let's see here. I have rolled an 18, which mm. is usually a very good number. Does that hit you? <laughs> uh, which one do I roll, just to be clear? Uh, you tell me if 18 is higher than your armor class. Uh, yes, yes it is. <laughs> All right. You get a, a javelin in the side for nine piercing damage. I suspect that that hurts a great deal. Don't yes, it. yes it does. I actually think it's, I think it's less than that. That's melee damage. Uh oh, haha! -ha. Thank you, thank you, Co Dungeon Master. Uh, they are much better Ooh, at, at Co Dungeon Master. Right, right. you've yeah. been promoted. <laughs> I've been promoted yeah. again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're back. Right. Oh, oh you're right. <laughs> thank, thank you for keeping me honest. It's when he's throwing the the uh, javelin. It's only five. Uh, if he was stabbing you with it, it's worth nine. So five points of damage in your side, which is still not really not not great. Not. Oh. Not, not, not your classic barding lifestyle to be stabbed with javelins. All right. Do I get to react to this at all? N nope. Not unless you have things, special things that let you react. So I yeah, don't nope, think you do. No, I do not. No. Can, 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 can others be helpful to her in her hour of pain, or do we need to um, wait our turns? On your turns, you you may okay. be able to heal it. Some characters have special powers called reactions. Um, I don't know if any of you have this at this level, but some characters do have a thing where it's like, I get stabbed, I get to stab them, or I got stabbed, I get to run away. But would medicine uh, but help in be, that case? Uh, uh, that would not be a reaction. Okay. Uh, Quick it. sidebar, I do have healing word, so I can yeah. attempt to heal myself should I make it to my turn. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up is uh, Team Goblin. Uh, there are a lot of goblins here. In fact, I'm regretting how many goblins <laughs> I have put on the map. Half of them run away. It is... No, I don't regret it that much. I just regret how much work it is to manage this many goblins. Um, the goblins uh, were kind of uh, a little bit further back. They are pouring up the hill. They are leaving the cover of the foliage. Um, and... Um, and, and and really just attacking the hillside here. Let's see. How much damage do they do the hillside? They so far no damage. Talk to me about uh, so the goblins. steepness of the angle of this hillside. I de we don't talk about hillside angles anymore. <laughs> not after that. Yeah, yeah. A um, lot of discussion on a previous uh, Barovia adventure about whether a hill was impossibly steep or not, <laughs> uh, or just really really steep. It was really really <laughs> really impossibly steep. It was totally possible, but it was really, really <laughs> steep. Elite. Let's let's re let's relitigate that. Tell us all about um, this hill. We'll vote. Mm, well, okay. You... <laughs> Dang it, Monty! My bluff has been called. I don't want to hear yeah. anymore about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's the thing. Uh, half of the goblins have short swords. Half of the goblins have short bows. Everything about goblins is short. Um, so uh, only half of them are going to be able to tack. Um, I think that based on how far away you are and um, that they're kind of shooting through the ruins at you as they kind of charge forward, I'm going to say they have disadvantage as they pepper, pepper you with arrows. Um, so I'm going to have four goblins roll attacks on, let's say, Krong, Jemika, Kaleth, and... Um, we'll say Enovan, because the four of you are in the front. So, let me just check here my goblin math. Um, Is the disadvantage because we're partially hidden behind a rock and a bugbear? Yeah, basically there's a bunch of, you know, there's a decent amount of architecture between you and them, so they're not very good at this. Um, so, Krong, first arrow. Ooh, I rolled really well, even with disadvantage. Uh, 18 to hit. Oh, that wow. will hit me. Uh, you're going to take five piercing damage. Jemica, uh, I rolled a seven. You can check if that hits you, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Nope. Uh, Kaleth, I rolled a 16 is pretty good. And how do I determine if I'm hit? Your armor class. Uh, is armor I'm a class. 15, so I guess Should I'm hit. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Wow. You get caught so in the arm for five piercing damage. Ow. Ow, and ow, ow. Enovin. Uh, Enovin, I rolled a critical fail. You are unsure if a goblin was actually targeting you. Right. Um, right. All right. Bellin, there are many things that you could smash. Okay. I forgot what my name was. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, all right. So I was going to go hit Grin the Goblin, but now I guess I'm going to go hit Curly the Bugbear. So I run up to him with my... Oh, let's do the Morning Star first. Morning Star for Morning Star. And... Ah. 12 versus AC. On Grin? Oh, so Curly. Uh, Curly. Uh, Curly, I think, is tougher than that. Curly is tougher than that. Okay. He's got a uh, hide armor and a shield. All right. Well, since I have two weapons and two weapon fighting, I'm also going to use my mm. Warhammer to try to hit... Ah, uh, left You're hand is better. carrying a morning star and a war yep. hammer. <laughs> As is <laughs> traditional. Uh, and that's a 19 versus AC, which I feel better about. Well, Curly is a well, burly, buff, well-armored bugbear, but not not that well-armored. Uh, so that is seven points of damage, because I don't get my bonus for the second, right? The left yeah. hand, yeah. Okay, I guess. so seven Bur points. Right. Burly is Shirley and Curly's sister. <laughs> yes. I'm oh, getting very confused. Burly, Burly is not going to be happened, I'm happy about what you did to Shirley. What so. am I going to tell Burly? I, <laughs> you know, we used to date to it. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. If we kill Grin, then he doesn't have to tell Burly. So. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> really doing him a favor at that point. Yeah, it's a time saving. Um, or we could just leave him on one health and look him around in mm -hmm. one of those onion soup. Uh, bowls. Mm -hmm. well, leave yeah. him a voucher for an onion soup. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bellin, you have uh, delivered a nice bl whack to Curly. Anything else? Nope, I think that's it. All I right. just, like, growl uh, a little. Yeah, <laughs> you're also right in Curly's face now. It seems like Curly is not going to be throwing javelins at anybody else anytime soon. Um, Kalef, our sorcerer friend, you are down at the hill. Um, not too far away from the battle. What's going to happen? So I have a longbow, and mm. I would like to shoot that at what? <laughs> Remember, Shelly, that you can move closer if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. And a longbow's range is... Up to range. your speed, okay. which is 30 feet, which is pretty yeah. good. Okay. So I'm going to do that as soon as I find myself. Sorry, I'm... Uh, these are a challenge for me. No worries. All right. There I am. So the range of a longbow, I'm not sure where to find that, actually. It's going to be it, long. Yeah. It's so any, long, any, long any, anywhere, on, super far. Yeah. anywhere on the map is probably within range of a longbow. Awesome. It's, it's pretty good. Well, um, I think I'm going to move over here, except I didn't go. Oh. Move over here, and I, I'm going to just aim at a goblin. I don't, we haven't named the goblins, have we? Not yet. <laughs> not, not, not each individual goblin, no. You have not had the... No, are we referring I, to the most goblins 1 through 10, or however many? Um, you know, I, I'm not going to tell you how to, how to name goblins. I, I, I wouldn't want to differentiate. I'm just going to uh, knock an arrow and uh, aim it at a goblin. And All right. What, what rolling say... do I need to do in order to make this happen? Uh, you're gonna roll a d20 and add whatever your your modifier is for uh, a longbow. Um, Shelly, if you're in D and D Beyond, you can just click yeah. in that box next right. to the longbow that has your plus whatever in it, and it'll, and it'll automatically it. roll it for you. Alrighty, let me find. Okay, equipment, longbow. I feel I feel like I'm slowing things down. I'm no, you're fine. Oh no, okay. you're fine. This is what D&D is, called... is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we add new people all the time. Otherwise, we would, you know. Nobody wants to just hear me and Monty talk. <laughs> Monty, how you doing? Uh, okay. I'm okay. Hey, how I just said no one cares. In the weapons, ba in the weapons <laughs> box, it says I have longbow, but when I go over to equipment, I don't see longbow. Oh, it's because you, you may not have, have, it, it have equipped. You equipped it? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I, actually, I think, you know what I even think it might be? I think you are good at longbows. But I don't have that. I see. Uh, we have. should add, we can tell we can add a longbow because I mean if you want it looks like you've got a crossbow uh, if you would rather yeah, have a longbow instead next... of a crossbow 
we can swap well, that out. And if you sure, want, why not? I think I will. Uh, I think yeah. I will have do that. Yeah, I think that's an oversight in setting up yeah, your character. If you want to just quick it, uh, like do a quick version of it, it's your whatever your dexterity bonus is plus your proficiency bonus would be your two hit. Mm-hmm. So if you roll a d twenty, D- uh, Dan will tell us what to add to it. Dexterity is two proficiency. Proficiency. Uh, it's up ah. near the top. So it's so I've got. Okay, I'm gonna roll a d twenty. Should be the. C- yeah, I've got it's it's two each. Oh, okay. All right, so plus four and. Right. So I rolled. Why is it not rolling? Clear. D twenty. And I rolled a sixteen. Nice. nice. Right. Twenty. That's great. All right. Twenty. Dude. So uh, you knock your arrow to your new freshly purchased longbow. <laughs> you, 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 you it still has that new longbow it. smell. <laughs> yeah. It's oh yeah. It's got it smells like. It's got like a uh, a, a tree scented thing on it, which is weird because it's made out of <laughs> wood. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, and you fire your arrow. Do you want to be uh, you? You targeted a goblin. How about we say this little our friend here uh, on the sure. uh, um, and you fire your arrow and it catches him uh, right in the uh, kind of in the neck. So the next thing you got to do is you got to roll me damage. Uh, Dan, do you know what the oh, damage is? It's for gonna a, be one d eight plus two, I believe, if your dexterity was two. Yeah. Yeah. So that comes. So roll a d eight. Roll as three high as you can. Plus plus two. two. Yeah. Uh, five. Uh, five damage, uh, which is not you know a lot of damage, but let me tell you, when you are just a as yet unnamed goblin, that is a lot of damage. <laughs> a, a significant amount of goblin blood splashes on to the. Uh, to the ground uh, here at the uh, the headless headless angel, um, so yeah, um, Shelly, we should try and flip your character sheet around. I think the key is we need to add a longbow to it and then equip the longbow, and that'll make uh, that'll do more of the math right. for you. I will do that beyond. while other turns are okay. If, if 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 that is tricky, uh, let us know and we'll figure okay. that out. But yeah, cool. All right, Caleb uh, K- was at the end of the order, which brings us back around to, to Enovan at the top. All right, so now how long? Yeah, go ahead. How long did, is command? Uh, how long does that last? So yeah, I was just checking that out. It it just says. I think uh, you just so, lose your next turn. Yeah, I think it's just one one round, one round. So gotcha. Yeah. All right. So. Um, Here's what Enovin's going to do. Enovin's going to move here. Um, Scurry up the yes. hillside. And he is going to n- notch his short bow. Uh, mm-hmm. And, hmm. Well, you know what? He is going to point it at Grin because mm-hmm. Grin shot at him first. Mm-hmm. So uh, turnabout is only fair play, and I think Grin Grin is kind of still feeling the effects of your command, right? So Grin is kind of like locked in this like, an- like animated loop of groveling. Right. Um, so I think Grin is gonna have a real hard time trying to duck or dodge a bow. So I think you have advantage. All right. Well, uh, so my first roll was a sixteen. Will that hit? Uh, Dan, remind me, is Grin yes. harder to hit than a normal uh, goblin? I, yes, he is harder to hit than a normal goblin. I think his armor class is, uh, oh, I had this up and I had written it down, and then I misplaced it because he's wearing studded leather armor. It's very fashionable. Yeah. And he's got a shield, mm. also very fashionable. It's probably so that's, uh, I think his, I think his, uh, AC is now exactly 16. Oh, so. okay. Oh, he's that's, got a shield while he was using a short bow? Right. That's true. He was. Yeah, I mean, he's he's confused. He's got a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He does back, and he's groveling. So technically, you know what? You don't. (laughs) You don't get to be the 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 representative of the Queen of of Redwater without being really good at multitasking, Monty. You (laughs) You know. So in this economy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, so uh, Er, uh, Enovan had recently seen uh, what the. The humans like to call a motion picture called the matrix and his he was a, mm-hmm. a fan of the one they called trinity and in fact mm. his hair is this a his hair is this a story 
is this a story that Jemica was telling you on the walk over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a bard, <laughs> a bard's down. telling. A bar, yes. Was, uh, so, well, uh, well, they were they were actually conversing about it because uh, he also knew about this and and it helped mm-hmm. bond them and and it's kind of how what inspired his haircut. Mm. Uh, he he really had an affinity for Trinity, and he <laughs> says, "Dodge this." And uh, his second role was a dirty twenty. Mm-hmm. So wow. uh, yeah, so I think that hits, correct? Yeah. Um, and ugh, 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 jeez, two points of piercing damage. Ugh. Oh, that was ah, so it's my, you had my shoulder. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was it was all finesse. So yeah. much effort in the finesse. Yeah. Mm. But it misses dads. Mm. I just I added some new ones. <laughs> I like the part where you jumped in the air and hovered there for a bit. While right. Yes. Him. While shooting him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. And then it yeah, I think it was I I still it was still bullet time and it slowed down. Yeah. So when it hit him, <laughs> If they had invented course. cameras, it would have panned around right, you like right. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else? Out of uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So that's, um, well, yeah. Why don't we, uh, as a bonus action, let's see. I, I do have bonus actions, believe it or not. I will cast Shield of Faith. On on uh, myself, or, or and Evan will cast Shield of Faith on himself, which gives him uh, plus two on his AC. Okay, excellent, because you're about to be surrounded by goblins. Yep. <laughs> yep. Krong! Uh, well, Krong will take a look at Curly and theatrically walk away mm-hmm. one square and then immediately <laughs> hide. With the cunning mm-hmm. action known to rogues. Everybody can ask a party, question you're about gonna, you're gonna you're gonna see this a lot. <laughs> yeah, can I ask a question about bugbears and object permanence? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard in battle, you know. Well, I'm clearly going up north. Uh, or I would be. I rolled in the See you later, so. says Krong, and like in this very exaggerated way. Right. Like, <laughs> I, I walk heavily so that my steps yeah, seem right. to get quieter. Yeah. He's he's hold, holding a change of address. Did you do the thing as you like where you like pretend to go downstairs behind yes, yeah, like yeah, exactly. It's gonna I'm go going in the basement. To the basement of yeah. these ruins. Uh, but I did only roll an eleven on stealth. Uh, let me just check. Uh, well, I think that this is battle, so that uh, bugbear's passive perception is ten. Oh. Uh, so I think, yeah. Well, I'm gonna say that. Then he won't yes. notice when I immediately turn around and go back to the same square I was in. <laughs> what now? Is this a new crown? <laughs> yeah. I thought you left. It's another bugbear. <laughs> it's me. What? Surely. Shirley. <laughs> Here, hold the point of this ring here. <laughs> oh. Did Krong go around the corner, put on his cool cat t-shirt, and come back as yeah, though he yeah, were a different yeah. bugbear? Yeah. I regret to inform you that I have rolled a natural 20. Oh, oh no. Is this... So that's probably real bad oh, for a bugbear. <laughs> um, so so uh, for our new players, uh, when you roll a natural 20, that is an exciting moment in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, you mm. get to, in 5th edition D&D, uh, d- you get to roll the damage die twice. Monty rolls a lot of damage dice that he will now get to roll twice. So probably it's just a question of how murdered is Curly the bugbear, uh, because I don't see a scenario where Curly lives through this. But let's find out together with math. Six, 28, plus three, 31 points of damage, please. All right. I hope that listeners were getting real attached to the story of Curly Burley and Shirley the Bugbear, uh, because that the last one is the one that you should put all your hopes and dreams into. <laughs> oh, classic fairy tale structure. I love yes. it. Yeah, as Curly the Bugbear hits the ground full of stabbings and minus a lot of blood. And yeah. I still have a little bit of movement left, and I'll just uh, do that. All right. The end. Lurk, lurk about in the shadows of the ruins. I'll, yeah, I'll do a little uh, victory lurk. 
All right, Grin the Goblin, congratulations. It's your first real turn in combat because you are no longer under the effects of command. You are lying in the mud, groveling, uh, but now you're groveling, I guess, out of free will and not out of the power of a command spell. Uh. <laughs> Things are not good for you, Grin. You really, your instructions were to return with a bag full of money. Uh, and so far, you're down two bugbears, which are the really powerful enforcers in your gang, and you are not currently up any money. Unless you search the pockets of the bugbears, which seems dangerous to do so right now. You do still have a small army of eight goblins behind you. Uh, but I don't know. Grin, this is the time to do uh, some, some soul searching. Gee whiz, I, yeah, you killed Shirley and Curly. I, how am I going to explain this to the queen? This is really, really cramping my style today. Plus the glob over there, you know, he's basically only barely hanging on. You shot a, an arrow in my shoulder. I'm just... I was just here to collect some money. I don't see why you had to get so, so violent. Uh, I, maybe I shot an arrow, but it was only one arrow. I mean, you know, how big a deal could it be? Didn't even hit the guy. Uh, Grin is going to uh, get to his feet, which will use some of his movement up. Mm -hmm. And he is going to uh, level a bow at, well, Enavon, because Enavon shot him. <laughs> so yeah. they're going to keep going on that line. Um and uh, am yeah, I so let's... behind cover? So is it? Um, I don't think you have enough cover to, okay. to do anything there, but you do have your shield, the faith. Yes, yes. All right. So, uh, short bow attack from Grin. Grin rolled a critical fail. Mm. Ah, that, it's hard to really shoot. A, it's hard to shoot a bow with an arrow in your shoulder. Let me tell you. <laughs> Uh, it is emblematic of how Grin's whole day has been going. <laughs> Grin, I think at this point, Grin is probably like uh, <laughs> trying to try to squeeze back through here and like get behind this statue and uh, perhaps let his mm. uh, uh, his goblin army try to take some of these guys out. Uh, Grin, I'd like you to do me a favor here. Uh, Shirley and Curly are dead. Uh, you have uh, been seen groveling in front of your uh, your 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 supposed enemy here. Uh, can you just roll me a quick, uh, let's call it a, a a d4 for how many goblins no longer have any faith in you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, two two goblins have decided that perhaps Grin is not the ideal leader for this particular situation. All right. <laughs> Just going to make note of that. Uh, <laughs> what is a good icon for dispirited with grin? Are they, are they turning tail? Face. Is that what's happening here? Are they? Right. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's yeah. You, you notice that two goblins look like they have no Hulk. heart left. Of come them. on, Gulk. Yeah, Storzib, you too. Come on, guys. It could have happened to anybody. Are you writing these names down, Tony? <laughs> uh, hold on. That was Gulk. <laughs> I'm just well, choosing the, the list of stores. Uh, stores. Uh, stores. All right. I got a list of goblin names. I decided I should use them. <laughs> the Fantastic Adventures adventure comes with a list of goblin and bugbear names that I provided Dan with. So, uh, all right. <laughs> Will we ever learn the, the tale of Stores of the Gulk, the goblins that ran away and never said anything or did anything? For answers to questions <laughs> such as these, uh, well, it's Rosemary's turn. So. <laughs> Rosemary. <laughs> uh, quick question. I believe uh, mm. my healing word is a bonus action. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, does that mean that I can use that and a cantrip? Indeed, you can. Time? Yes. That's Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Then uh, I would like to use a message on Gulk and say, well, why don't you kill Grin? <gasps> <laughs> nice. Give me a give me a quick implicit persuasion check in that message, and you know what? I'm gonna say you've got advantage because of everything okay. that's happened to. Well, Grin the today. first one scored me twenty, uh, so oh, okay. And the second one scored me twenty, so whoa! I'm pretty right. persuasive well, today. Whoa. Yeah. We, I'm pretty we, persuasive we'll, with we'll, my cantrip message. Nice work. We'll find out. We'll find out what happens on the goblin's turn. Um, but it's still your turn. Okay. Wonderful. So I'll follow this up with a bonus action of a healing word, please. And okay. Uh, if I cast that, oh. sorry. Uh, so I need to. Okay. I get to heal myself with four points. So I am back up to fourteen. Excellent. All right. Um, 
you're all set. Javelin is no longer stuck. You're all set, Rosemary. Yes, yeah. The cool. javelin all is right. no longer on my side, and uh, I'm limping a little bit, but I'll I'll recover. It'll be fine. Right. Excellent. Walk it off. Um, I, I I think walking it off is probably horrible advice. If you, I mean, I just need some French onion <laughs> soup. French yeah. onion yes. soup is the the right. cure for all yeah. problems and ills. Total total party kill is not a source of authority. <laughs> Brought to you by French onion soup. <laughs> mm. All right, next up would be <laughs> <laughs> sacré bleu. Uh, next, all right. That's enough goblin talk, people. Uh, ne- <laughs> Sorry, goblin onion soup. Right. Yeah, oh, that's next much up worse. Would, much worse. Next up would be uh, uh, the bugbear's turn. They are dead. I'm just trying to imagine what vegetable would be referred to as a goblin onion. <laughs> it might just be a potato, but maybe it's like eggplant. I don't know. Um, so, it's a uh, ne- yeah. yeah, small green. Uh, next, <laughs> next up is Team Goblin. Um, one of the goblins just makes a break for it. Um, Gulk also is going to head off, but on his way. Uh, Dan, you want to roll a quick uh, quick attack for Gulk with advantage as he tries to stab Grin in the back? <laughs> uh, he rolls a 10 with his uh, short sword. Even there. with advantage? Yeah, I rolled a 6 and a 1. Oh, well, all oy. right. He's right. half-hearted. I mean, like, he yeah. and Grin go back a ways. He doesn't really want to kill him, but that voice was just so persuasive. He was He's best like, I can try. at Gulk's wedding. I, I can kill him. Oh, no. I can just give him a little stab. <laughs> like, if he dies, that's not on me. So the two goblins that are, are in this adventure, at least briefly, uh, Storzib has run away. Gulk has took, taken a half-hearted stab at Grin, missed, and fled into the bushes. That does relieve... Uh, I believe there are six goblins still there in addition to their leader, Grin the Goblin. Uh, some of them are armed with bows, some of them with swords, uh, and they are um, they are not happy. One of them, Glop, is badly injured. Uh, Dan, what do you think? I think this is a time the goblins are going to have to make one uh, attempt at doing some damage before they uh, they cut their losses. Um yeah. I think so, they, I think these goblins are gonna at least take some shots here and try to uh, at least be able to tell the queen that they did their mm. best. All right, Enovan, uh, you are still thankfully uh, shielded by your faith. Uh, two goblins come running around the rocks at you, one on each side, and they're gonna make two scimitar attacks. Dan, would you mind rolling those for me? Absolutely. Uh, well, one of them rolled a six, which is not great. The other mm. one. Rolled a natural twenty, which oh. is also which not is, great. Yeah, yes, just for different people. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's we're the highs and lows. Right. Yeah, highs and lows here on Total Party Kill. Um, so Dan, guess what? When, even for uh, uh, goblins, they get to roll double That's the damage. Right, dive, they right? do, and they rolled two ones. Really snatching defeat oh. from the jaws of victory. There, that's a total of four <laughs> damage. And Evan, how are you doing so far? Uh, I am down four. Uh, out of, uh, I'm just curious. I, cause oh, out of, I don't out know of 15. Totally I, am, I, am okay. le- I am less than, uh, you know, less than 66% hurt. Okay. So things aren't great, but you're not in, you know, in, in mortal peril yet. Am, but yes. you would probably prefer to be stabbed less. I, I, um, yeah, and, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the thing of dreams here in Dungeons yes. and Dragons. The friendly uh, bard this... is ready and willing with healing word when yeah. it gets to her turn. This uh, third goblin is going to take a shot at Enovan with a bow and arrow. Uh, you are, I'm going to say, because of that cover, uh, it's going to have disadvantage. Uh, well, I rolled a critical success on one die, but when oh. you have disadvantage, you got to use the four on the other die. Wow. So that is going to be an eight. <laughs> oh, well, and like that, that much misses. better. So his arrow hits the rock that you're uh, kind of hiding behind perfectly. Um, the other three goblins are going to kind of pour through the ruins here. Uh, what are they going to do? I think they see Krong and Gemica. Uh, so they're going to pop out here. Um, and, oh, ba- let's see. I'm going to spread out my attacks, I think. Uh, Dan, roll me a quick scimitar attack as one rushes up to our bard friend. All right. Uh, that is a 15. That hits me. I have 12. Alas. Uh, I am going to roll a short bow attack as one fires an arrow at, uh, oh God, I've already forgotten the pronunciations of character names. Uh, Belen, Belen, 
Bellin, yeah. <laughs> I have rolled an eight. That doesn't seem like that's going to hit a no. chainmail shirt wearing dwarven warrior. All right. And uh, Krong, a, bu- a goblin has popped around the corner, perhaps somewhat startled to see you, and he kind of yelps and stabs you. Uh, he has rolled a 18 with his scimitar. Then he will successfully stab me. Five slashing damage. And the oh, same geez. to Gemeka as well. Also yeah, five. same to Gemeka. I have taken Sorry, very nearly half of my hit points five. in damage. Five damage, Rosemary. Cool. All right. Uh, Bell Ellen. Bell N. I'm bad at names. Bell N. Bell N. Belden. Belen, it is your turn. Did she go by Bell for short? <laughs> sure, let's go by Bell. Let's go by Bell. Um, although she doesn't like books, it's it's a it's it's a thing. Um, so first, and you can punch books. I can punch books. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you can use books to punch people. Mm. True. As a Born free identity action, to I'm going to make eye contact people. with Grin the Goblin and just do like mm. the two finger, two finger like. <laughs> I, Grin I, is I, Grin is poking out behind that statue and is just like, oh, jeez, yeah. yeah, she looks really scary. Yeah, uh, coming for you, but I've got to mow way, my way through these goblins first. So I'm going to step over the corpse of this felled bugbear. And I'm going to hit this goblin in front of me first with my morning star. 13. Uh, does a 13 hit a goblin? It does not hit a goblin. Yeah, a little off balance. You know, I'm a dwarf yeah. trying to trying you to know, navigate this bug- giant corpse. Yeah, bugbears are not the best uh, footing to yeah. do your attack. Yeah. That's, that's some life advice for everybody out there. But they might <laughs> don't, make you don't. great for a coat. Yeah, I just I think they're not they're not the best step stool. Yeah. Um, um, so, so I'm gonna swing my very glossy my war yeah. hammer. <laughs> so I'm gonna swing my war hammer, and that's a 22 versus AC. Uh yeah, that'll do it. Oops, I rolled a rolled the wrong die here. Try again. Uh, for five points of damage. And Ugh, that is a lot of damage when you're just a little goblin. I think I'm actually going to take my action surge mm. and hit at it, swing at it again with my morning star. And that's a 15 versus AC. That is the AC of a goblin. So okay. as a fighter, uh, uh, Aline has this action surge ability where basically you get a- extra actions. So. Uh, and that's seven points of damage. Oh, you basically cave this unknown goblin's head in. Ooh. That's just what I wanted to do. And uh, I laugh victoriously. <laughs> okay. Grin looks it's gonna horrified. Be, it's going to be very hard to question that goblin afterwards. <laughs> that's um, okay. Grin's still alive. Yeah, he that's right. His carbs yep. around for a yep. bit. Yep. Uh, Kal- Caleb, how's it going? I'm just hanging out over here. Can I like throw some intimidation at these goblins who keep coming at us and keep getting pummeled and just yeah. like, hey, so yeah. So what I need to do is roll. That is a, oh, not so good. Oh, uh, 18 plus two is 20. That's very good. Yes, uh, Dan. <laughs> You know how, Dan, what did I have you roll on Grin's last turn when people ran away from him? Uh, that was a good D4. question. D4. Yes, D4. D4 goblins. Dan, next time it's a, at the, Grin's next turn, please roll a D6 for how many goblins give up on him. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> because the goblins are, are, uh, are losing faith in really this whole operation right now. The question will be whether that die roll is higher than the number of goblins remaining. <laughs> it's possible it will be higher than the number of goblins remaining. So, um, Kaleth, would you like to do anything else on your turn? Um, what's the number of got? Maybe I should move a little bit. I've been in the same spot for a while. I'm feeling more secure about my position. So I'm going to just move. And I'll consider your intimidation there just like a bonus action if you also want to cast a spell or or fire a longbow shot. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take another longbow shot. Sure. That sounds great. Um, well, uh, Glop still has one of your arrows in his arm. Mm. 
Oh, I thought Glop was gone, but I saw him there, and I was like, wait, what's up with that? No, guy? no, no, he's... All right, Glop is Glop's hanging still there. for the I long mean, haul. He wishes he had gone somewhere else. So <laughs> that is... I like how they all get named right before they die. <laughs> <laughs> As All right, so remind me now. I, I I roll and then I add what to it? You're going to yep. add four, I, I think we decided. Okay, to so 20, 22. For your longbow attack. 22 mm-hmm. altogether. That's really good. I think that hits. Yeah, that that definitely hits. Now you get to decide, or not decide, you get to roll a damage for your longbow. No, you get to decide your damage. How much <laughs> damage do you have? Scissor zero. Pick the voice of roll 20. Do what right. he says. <laughs> right. I, I know. Oh, no. I believe him. And damage Sorry, is a D8? Yep. Yes. Yep. Plus, plus, plus two. two. Plus two. So I, I suspect things are not going to go well for Glock. Seven. Yeah. Wow. That's, <laughs> uh, yeah, you That's how many hit points your... Glop had like 20 minutes Glop, ago. <laughs> yeah, Glop. Yeah. There was Glop like at the toast. start of the morning, Glop woke up with seven seven hit points. <laughs> uh, your arrow fires and hits uh, Glop right, right between the eyes. He flops backward, uh, which is good. Glop and another uh, to be named Goblin were, you know, flanking Enovin. Things didn't look good. So the fact that there is one less Goblin in the fray is uh, is good. Uh, very nice uh, sharpshooting from Caleb. Uh, Enovin, you are up next. Oh man, uh, what can Enovin do? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, well, there's a goblin right in your face. There is a goblin right in my face. Uh, well, Enovin. Uh, so um, that light in his eyes, that light mm. in his eyes that that we saw before the little menace. Um, it seemed like a flame actually looks like flames to this unnamed goblin. As Enovin, uh looked at Glop and looked at the corpse of Glops and then turned and looked directly at this goblin. And uh, Enovin cast the cantrip, Sacred Flame. Oh, no. And uh, that is a dex saving throw. All right. I will roll a dex saving throw. Uh, If there's anything goblins are good at, they are pretty dexterous. Uh, But not when I rolled. I I rolled an 11. I said, oh, uh, yeah. The save (laughs) save was a 12. Mm. And this goblin will take three points of damage. Uh, Not good for the goblin. Yeah. Badly what's, what's good for the goose? It's good, good for, for the goblin. Bad, bad for the goblin. goblin. Bad for the goblin. <laughs> Title. Um, <laughs> as a bonus action, uh, he will uh, take out his scythe, which uh, isn't in D and D Beyond. So instead of a scythe, he's got a sickle. It's, okay. You know, the I, same. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the difference between those two things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think a, a sickle is a scythe with a shorter handle. Yeah. So, well, it's got like the more of the actual one is for hay. Right. Yes. One of them is like a <laughs> like more like a crescent moon shape whereas the scythe yeah. has like the long right. Mm. Thin, scythe right. are only it's sourced to the scythe region of France. Yes, that's right. Yes. Sorry. It's otherwise it's a sparkling sickle. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a yeah. sparkling sickle. <laughs> I take out my glaive glaive with arm bull's glaive. <laughs> Stop talking goblin talk, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> been over this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he takes out his uh, scythe coal and uh, 19 to hit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, do you have enough actions to also do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. This is my sure bonus what... action. Bonus action is, uh, yeah, so I can I can take uh, two weapon fighting. For okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, uh, roll me some damage yeah. as this uh, goblin that has already been sacred flames is okay. probably as his day continues to get worse. Dan, was it the first episode of Inconceivable that had pole armor cheese? I was like the fifteenth or seventeenth or something. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, like first in your yeah it did feel. It felt like it, first. it just. It always sticks in my brain whenever people are using weapons that I, I'm like, I don't actually know what that looks like. The the one of the rounds of inconceivable was Dan gave us a bunch of funny words, and it was was this a weird cheese or was this a weird Dungeons and Dragons weapon? It's, no, those are real weapons. <laughs> Dan, they're Dungeons and Dragons weapons. Oh well, yeah, sorry. I mean, but a yeah. medieval pole arm. They're real. <laughs> in your imagination. 
Well, so that was that was the episode where uh, Inconceivable actually became real. <laughs> mm, yeah. It became so, conceivable. Yeah. It became conceivable. Uh, yeah. And um, Enovin decided to uh, take this unnamed goblin and also hit them for four more points of damage. That is exactly how many hit points uh, the uh, the goblin had. Enovin, I guess you kind of just, you locked off something very important with your scythe from this goblin and it was already kind of dealing with being uh, melted with sacred flame. Um, yes. This has not, not, not been a strong round for the goblins, unless you count death as like... <laughs> I do. They're doing great. That is a, that is a strength. Succeeding. They're succeeding it's, at that. Yes. It's the, it's yeah. the last greatest adventure. Mm. Uh, Krong, I think you're up. All right. Uh, first, I'd like everyone to know that there is a pole arm in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons called a Bohemian Ear Spoon. I just like bringing what, that up. What? Is that, is that, is that your turn? Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Bohemian Ear Spoon. As my bonus mm. action, I would like to use my Bohemian Ear Spoon <laughs> to. <laughs> Eat some applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just adding a little flavor because what I'm actually doing is pretty straightforward. I would like to hide. I don't know if you're going to let me because there's a goblin there and a goblin there. Why don't we say you do so with disadvantage? You're still really good at hiding, though, Kron. Okay. Either a 23 or 19. I'll take the 19. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think somehow you managed to find a little shadow in the ruins. It does help that uh, one of the other goblins was not focused on you. It was focused on Jemica. So uh, you have concealed yourself from the goblins once again. All right. Then I will again stab, stab, stab that guy over there With to the west. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next question is, which goblin are you murdering? That roll was a one. Luckily, the advantage. I have rolled another one. So that is a critical failure. Wow. A rare failure okay. for Kron. Right, right. Two, uh, two burly, long, long arms <laughs> dart out of the shadows with swords and like gently brush past, the, past this <laughs> goblin who is like, that's still really spooky, even if I'm not hurt and bleeding. Uh, um, it turns out I shouldn't have been yelling out information about pole arms. While <laughs> I <did>. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can I interest I think, you in a nice brie? It's actually a, a, a long stick with a blade at the end. All right. It is Grin the Goblin next. Well, Grin the Goblin on his dice of fleeing goblins has rolled a four, which I do think covers all remaining goblins. I believe there's only three, three yep. goblins Grin, left. Grin will still right. peek out from behind the statue and say, you're doing great, keep up the good work. And, and he's slowly <laughs> backing away. And then when he makes it to this hill, he is just going to turn and run. All right. Uh, two of the goblins were not engaged with you. They had been hanging back, firing uh, arrows at you. And they basically turned to run. Um, but they don't get to do that until it is their turn. Uh, Jemica, there is a... Uh, Gemica. Gemica? Gemica. Nope, those both Gem. sound wrong. Hard G. Yeah. Hard G. Yeah. Gemica. Uh, there is, the goblin is engaged with you, which means that if he runs away, you may be, be able to stab at him uh, on his way when you're, you know, when you're fighting face-to-face uh, -face with someone, you can't just, or there are penalties to running away. Yes, uh, well. But yeah, it is clear the uh, goblin's spirits have been broken. Uh, Grin is just gone. There's no <laughs> It's like a little cloud of dust. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's just, just a grin-shaped hole in the foliage uh, that he has disappeared through. Well, I've um, often seen a hole without a grin. Oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Gamica, it is your turn. Uh, so, uh, the... Uh... Yeah, the, the goblin next to me who is about to run away or is going to attempt mm -hmm. to run away. Uh, am I allowed to use my attack of opportunity now? Uh, um, as soon as it runs away, oh, okay. it will provoke so, an yeah. attack of opportunity from you. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to, I think, use a spell for sleep because I think it might be good to have one of these goblins. Handy. And I'm As a wondering pet? if we put him to sleep, then if we can basically kidnap him and make him tell us all, more information later. We need a mm -hmm. cute mascot that it works yeah. on us to make this more uh, kid friendly. We need I'm glad that you've de de escalated yeah. from murder to kidnapping. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it works on podcasts. One uh, mascot goblin uh, that is your friend undoes 
eight to 12 murders. <laughs> um, it's worth a shot, right? Some basic math. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just doing things. Up. This is not, this is not a math. This is appeal to children. Uh, so how does sleep work? Because I don't know. <laughs> uh, sleep has a range of 90 feet. Um, or I can reduce the range. Um, and, uh, it lasts for one minute. So that is 10 right. turns of combat, I believe. And yeah. That's a lot of time in combat. Yes, and uh, if I click on cast, then what happens? So I believe sleep even would usually be used on a uh, uh, like a, a, a range of enemies because yeah. it will put a certain number of hit points to sleep. Yes, I don't. I don't think it is possible for you not to put one goblin to sleep. Um, I think unfortunately the goblins are spread out, so you can't target multiple goblins easily. Uh, um, I believe it has yeah. a spherical range of twenty feet. If I yeah. choose to do that, no. or ninety feet in a directional range, yeah, you could yeah. you could so you get drop to put it right a circle there. of twenty. Is does it, it do it there? And is it like enemies two, two or goblins. creatures? It is enemies. Okay, specifically. Oh, I believe. So uh, I think it's creatures. creatures. Oh no, it does say it says yeah. creatures into. Oh, then I probably should. not So the do tricky that. thing is like. Well, you I you could totally find a circle that just has one goblin in it. I think Aline was saying like, oh, the those two goblins is aren't Kron that far is apart. Also, going to get hit, or and me, I'm right next to him. So yeah, yeah. on how you yeah. did it. Yeah. That so said, it, the way sleep works, just to clarify, is it starts with the people with the lowest number of hit points. So depending on if Krong has taken any damage, he probably has a lot more hit points than goblins. So it will hit the goblins first. Right. And probably, plus, if it hits him, you just nudge him and you can wake him up again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you might like a nap. You don't know. <laughs> this is true. I mean, would yeah. it heal him, potentially? Is that a bonus? No. <laughs> I have taken, <laughs> I have taken very rest. nearly half of my hit points of damage. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, all right. Then instead, I'm just going to use my crossbow and I'm just going to shoot at the goblin next to me because, you know. Let, let's right. re-escalate from kidnapping back up to murder. Uh, I think yep. that that's a good idea. Uh, are we still allowed to pretend we are attacking non-lethally? Um, yeah, you can pretend it. I mean, I, it's pretty clear to me that uh, Bellin was not pretending that. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> All right. But like Rosemary could say, yeah. I am attacking non-lethally and just yeah. knock someone out with her crossbow shot. I think you could shoot somebody in the foot with a crossbow. I mean, I like I'm going to shoot him in the foot and I've just rolled 21. So okay. They're, well, they're, gr good. Not it bounces off his foot and hits him in the face. Uh, no, but <laughs> you totally hit him in the foot. Um, and uh, so. for five piercing damage. All right, he is very badly hurt. I like the idea that Bellin was yelling, "I'm attacking non-lethally," but just lying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm attacking non-lethally. Cranks beating to death with a war <laughs> hammer and a. It's, it's I'm not great deception. at deception. I'm not yeah. great at it, but I try. You know? It's okay. It's I've hard. set my morning star to stun. <laughs> yeah, you, you Usually, a morning star does stun, and... but it's on the way to kill. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, meant to swap stunned. in that nerf, nerf morning did. star. Yeah, briefly, briefly stunned right. before he was dead. <laughs> All right, it is Team Goblin. Uh, I think the other two goblins are just going to run away, uh, but there is a goblin right next. Uh, to Gemica, uh, that goblin provokes an opportunity attack from you as it goes. Wonderful. Can I attack with my crossbow again for this opportunity attack? Uh, Dan, what are you... Usually a ranged dagger. attack at uh, close range would incur disadvantage. Okay, so I'd yeah, be better off using my dagger. Wanna... Yeah. All right. I also get to attack it with an attack of opportunity. All right. Oh, oh because of your crazy range? range? Yes. Yes. Well, my attack of opportunity ha gets 18 when I roll that uh, with my yep. dagger, and my piercing damage is three. All right. Uh, Krong, do you want to do something also? I would like to attack it non-lethally, please. Yep. 15. Uh, that's its armor class. Well, then, I see it is engaged in combat with an ally of mine, so I will take that sneak attack damage. Thank you. Right. Non-lethal sneak attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Eleven points of non-lethal damage, please. You know, goblins have right, like seven so hit points, right? <laughs> <laughs> I basically yeah. imagine that, uh, Jemica, you have, you have shot you have shot him in one foot with a crossbow bolt, and it's running away. And you basically throw your dagger into the other, or I guess you not throw, clip clip the other foot with a, and he stumbles and Krong with his giant long monster arm basically clotheslines him, uh, and that that. 
that uh, that that uh, that goblin is uh, on the ground, uh, unconscious and significantly bleeding. Well, you have dealt with uh, the emissaries of the Queen of Redwater. Uh, you have dispatched many a bugbear and many a goblin. Several uh, lie uh, unconscious, where no doubt you will question them uh, next session, where others have lived and run away to tell the tale of these fearsome adventures from the town of White Sparrow. What will be the repercussions of this battle? What will you learn of the Queen of Redwater? Will you make your way to the ancient Dwarven Dam that controls all of the water in the valley? For answers to questions such as these, tune in next time.